small decision made in the fraction of a second can completely change your life and influence major changes in the future. And that concept has a name. It's called the butterfly effect. You might have seen this picture before. A three-year-old LeBron James playing on a mini hoop that his mom got him on Christmas in 1987. Something as simple as a mother buying her child a basketball hoop completely changed the trajectory of NBA history. That small three-year-old boy would go on to become one of the greatest basketball players of all time, changing the way that the game is played and influencing kids from all around the world. If she never buys the hoop, does LeBron ever fall in love with basketball? What if she instead bought him a football? Does LeBron go on to become the greatest player in NFL history? No one knows. How many young players in the NBA today say that their favorite player growing up was LeBron James? The answer is a lot. If this younger generation of players never watched a LeBron highlight or fell in love with the way he played the game, then they may have never found basketball, leading them down a completely different path in life. But all because of a decision made in that moment to buy her child a mini basketball hoop, it affected the lives of millions of people. A decision can change everything. What if Michael Jordan never retired during the middle of his prime? Would he end up finishing his career with 8 championships? Or would his legacy of never losing in the finals be tainted? Does Hakeem Olajuwon win 2 championships if MJ is still in the league? What if the fan that threw the cup at Ron Artest missed? The malice of the palace never happens, Indiana remains championship favorites as they go on to win the finals, and Reggie Miller gets his long-awaited championship in his final season. Which also means that the Spurs don't win the championship in 2005, and Tim Duncan has one less ring on his resume all because of a cup. What if the Milwaukee Bucks accepted the trade for Steph Curry? A Giannis and Curry duo would dominate the league for well over a decade, meaning there's no 3-1 comeback that happens in 2016. The Eastern Conference is even more competitive now, stopping LeBron from making 8 straight finals appearances. And it results in the disappearance of Golden State's super team, leaving Kevin Durant no KC or on another contender. Or maybe he joins the Curry and Giannis Milwaukee Bucks and still destroys the league. What if Kyrie misses the shot and LeBron doesn't get the block? Then Draymond Green has a finals MVP. What if Ray Allen misses the three? Then Danny Green would have a finals MVP. What if Chris Paul never tore his hamstring? What if Kobe and Shaq never have beef? What if LeBron never leaves the Cavs? What if the Timberwolves don't pass on Steph Curry? What if the Timberwolves don't pass on Steph Curry again? What if the Bulls never trade for Scottie Pippen? What if Sacramento what if drafts with the Dodgers? What if Derek Rose never comes back? What if the Pistons draft Carmelo Anthony instead of Dark Horse? What if Kawhi stays in Toronto? Magic was never what if the NBA Wayne and Vito and Chris Paul go instead of Miami? We'll never know. And that's the beauty of it. Here are four moments that had the biggest impact on NBA history. Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Chris Paul. Who could have seen this trio together just five years ago? But what if I told you that Chris Paul and the Warriors could have happened 12 years ago? In 2011, Chris Paul demanded a trade from the Hornets, and being the best point guard in the NBA and an MVP candidate at the time, CP3 was sought after by numerous teams, including the Warriors. The package that Golden State offered was Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and a first round pick. Yeah, you heard that right. It's laughable now, but it was a real possibility. But CP didn't want to go to Golden State, causing the trade to fall through. But what if? At the time, it would be a fair trade. Curry hadn't had his coming out party yet, averaging 14 points on the season after suffering a brutal ankle injury, while Clay was coming off the bench averaging 12 points a night. Two young players for a franchise point guard averaging 20 points, 9 assists, and 2.5 and steals per game. I'd make that trade. If the trade goes through, the butterfly effect would be in full effect. The Hornets would still be bad with an injured Curry and young Clay Thompson, which means they still draft Anthony Davis at number one in the 2012 draft. Golden State never successfully dominates the West because they traded their young future superstars for a point guard that doesn't even want to be there in the first place. The 73-9 season never happens, there's no 3-1 collapse in the NBA Finals, Durant never joins Golden State to create the most offensively dominant team of all time. Does KD ever get a ring? The trade to Golden State means that the Lob City Clippers never happen. How do Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan develop without an all-time passer on the court with them? If the now Pelicans have a big three of Steph, Clay, and Anthony Davis, does AD ever request a trade to go to the Lakers to team up with LeBron? Probably not. Allowing us to see what kind of damage that LeBron and his young Lakers core can do. Or maybe they still get traded for another superstar. If the Warriors and Hornets had gone through with the trade, it would have completely turned the NBA upside down. But instead, the trade falls through and we live through a completely different timeline. One of Larry Bird's greatest accomplishments of his career was when he won three straight regular season MVPs from 1984 to 1986. But the truth is, 
he should have won five straight MVPs. During his three-year stretch, Bird averaged a 26-point double-double on great efficiency, and the following two years were the best of his career. Following the MVPs were two seasons where he averaged 29-9-7 on 50-40-90 shooting. The greatest stretch of his career was after he was named the league's best player for three straight seasons. But after five years of dominance over the NBA where it seemed like he was only getting better with age, Larry missed nearly the entirety of the next season due to injuries, never being the same player again. But it could have been avoided. During the prime of his career in 1985, Larry went back to his hometown of French Slick where his mother's home needed a new driveway. Despite making hundreds of thousands of dollars per year, Larry took it upon himself to get his hands dirty and do it himself. He spent the summer shoveling gravel, literally breaking his back, and shortening his basketball career without even knowing it. Bird's orthopedic therapist has said that Larry's back was never the same after that. His back would slip in and out of alignment and lock into abnormal positions. The pain was manageable for a few hours at a time, which allowed Larry to play basketball. The decision to take it upon himself and fix his mother's driveway not only changed the trajectory of his career, but of NBA history. If Larry doesn't fix his mom's driveway and delays his back problems for another 5 years, how many more MVPs and championships does he have? He was still a great player playing through injuries, so if he was still healthy in the early 90s, do he and the Celtics steal a championship from the Bulls? With one less championship on Jordan's career, losing to an aging Bird and Celtics team would be a knock on his career. Or maybe their battles with a healthy Larry Bird and Celtics team take so much out of Chicago that they don't get their first three-peat and Jordan doesn't retire in 1993, hunting for revenge against Boston. Without retiring, how many rings does MJ finish his career with? Does that mean that Hakeem never gets his time to shine without Jordan in the league? How many more MVPs and championships does Larry Bird win if he's fully healthy? Can he rank as a top 3-4 to four player in NBA history now? If Bird had simply hired someone to fix his mother's driveway, all of these questions would be answered. But instead, we live in a reality where Larry can't help but do it on his own, limiting his basketball abilities and retiring sooner than expected. In the 2017 offseason, the Cavs were coming off of a finals loss to a stacked Warriors team, and a blockbuster trade would fix everything. On draft night, the Cavs were cooking up a three-team trade. Cleveland would send Kevin Love to the Nuggets, the Pacers would receive Gary Harris in a first-round pick, while the Cavs would somehow walk away with Paul George. One of the best two-way players in the NBA joining LeBron James and Kyrie Irving to create a new big three and compete with the Warriors. With a new wing defender, the Cavs have someone else to throw a KD in any attempt to slow him down. But you may also remember, in that same offseason, Kyrie demanded a trade out of Cleveland. But if the Cavs landed PG, does he still request a trade? If he does, Cleveland could ignore his demand since they hold more leverage with a better team around their stars. But does this new and improved Cavs team have what it takes to knock down the Warriors? It would make for a more interesting series, but I don't think so. But that's not where the butterfly effect comes into play. With a better team around LeBron who's headed into the final year of his contract where he can opt out, the trade would likely keep him in town. If so, the big three Cavaliers dominate the East for at least another five years. LeBron never leaves to go to LA, making it unlikely that the Raptors win their first championship. And would Toronto even make the trade for Kawhi in the first place if LeBron stays in the East? Then where does Kawhi get traded to? What does that mean for AD if LeBron doesn't sign in LA? Does he get traded to the Celtics or the Knicks? Does Durant stay with Golden State now that the finals matchups are more competitive? If Kyrie never gets traded to Boston, does he still become hated by the media? What does the Brooklyn Nets' young core look like after four more years together if they never sign Kyrie and KD? If the three-team trade happened in 2017, the last six years of the NBA would be flipped upside down, and we might be watching Warriors vs Cavs in the NBA Finals for the eighth straight year. Wouldn't that be awesome? But because the Pacers didn't want to trade Paul George to a division rival, they instead shipped him to OKC to form a big three with Westbrook and Melo. But I like the other timeline much better. The thing is, if basketball had never been invented, then we wouldn't even be talking about any of this. That's obvious. Which makes this the biggest butterfly effect. If Springfield, Massachusetts had warmer winters, James Naismith wouldn't have needed to invent a new indoor game to keep his students active. Basketball would have never been invented. In December of 1891, Springfield College asked the professor James Naismith to create an indoor game to keep their student athletes active. The simple demand to invent a sport because it was too cold outside resulted in basketball being invented. Isn't that crazy? If the weather in Springfield, Massachusetts was warmer during the winters, basketball would have never been invented. Or if James Naismith taught at a different school, he would have never needed to invent a game. The smallest decision to create a sport or to teach at a school resulted in the creation of a multi-billion dollar company that we now know today as the NBA. A split second decision can change the course of history. And in this case, it gave us basketball.